question for you. Should women be crying more at work and shunning Botox fillers and other methods designed to hide their age? And is all of this, in part, the key to true equality in the workplace? Jennifer Palmieri learned a few life lessons during her years working in politics, most recently as the communications director for Hillary Clinton's 2016 presidential race. As the highest ranking woman in that campaign, she clearly knows a thing or two about female empowerment. She has detailed her advice, along with some personal moments from the political trail, in a new book, Dear Madam President, an open letter to the women who will run the world. Please welcome Jennifer Palmieri. Hi. Hi. OK, so when I first got this book, I thought, oh, it's going to be a long <laughs> book about why Hillary lost, and it, it wasn't just justified. And it wasn't that. Right. It wasn't. And in fact, I read it cover to cover, every single word, and thought, I've never read a book like this in my life. Uh -huh. From a strong, powerful woman with real life practical advice to other women on real challenges that are there, whether we want to admit them or not. Yeah. Is that why you wrote it? I wrote it because um, I thought that coming out of that campaign, right, you, you, I felt like I had a very unique perspective and some insight about how we think about women in leadership roles. And I had been myself as a woman in politics and, you know, worked in two White Houses. Uh, I've seen how people operate at the highest levels of government, highest of power. And, you know, one thing for people to know is it's not as hard as, it, as, as you might think. And you can do it. Even a reality star could do it. <laughs> Evidently, anyone, <laughs> Megan, can be president. Um, and I wanted, I want the, I feel like we're in this moment of empowerment, right? Women weirdly feel empowered in, the, in this moment. And I want to make sure that we make the most of that. I saw, you know, yesterday there was Martin Luther King's granddaughter, Yolanda, who spoke at the, um, at the march this weekend. And she was so amazing. She's nine years old, and like all little girls, she has she, she was joyful and fearless, and like had all the confidence in the world. And um, I want this generation that's coming up now not to lose that. Mm -hmm. Right at some point, like little girls have all that confidence, and then at some point they learn to be inhibited because all of society sends them messaging on it. Uh, it's not yeah. just. If you have great parents, you won't grow up that way. Society is sending girls the wrong messages. But and wait, I want to... And that's, like, what I want... And that's what I want people to take away from this, is that is, is how to unlearn those things. So the next generation, they really do run the world, those girls. But there's very good practical advice in here, which we're going to get to, including the, the stuff about crying. Um, but first, let me ask you about Hillary and Donald Trump. Uh, I thought it was interesting. The day after she lost, you wrote I, what I felt was fear. Mm -hmm. How do you feel now? I, I'm still, I mean, there are things I'm still uh, frightened for the country, but I don't feel, I think that it is, it, it felt to me like a different universe, and that's why I, I wrote about it as starkly as I did in the book, because I want people to understand it is, I felt it, it might not have been the, a glass ceiling that shattered that night, but something exploded, and I feel like we were in a new universe, and I found that really frightening in the beginning, and then... Now I, find, now I feel empowered. And I think that women could decide after, um, you know, it's not so much about politics even or about Hillary versus Trump, but just that the woman lost, a man like Trump won, and you could decide that's how it's supposed to be or we've been playing by the wrong set of rules and we are going to play a whole new game now. And so that's like the book is about how do you, how do you make the most of that, that sense of empowerment? We've seen and some of that. Play by, with, and you play by your own set of rules. With the Me Too movement and so on, a lot of people yes. believe that wouldn't have been happening had Trump not been elected. I think that's right. I do want to, I want to challenge you on this. Um, you wrote underneath all the questions about wiping the server clean and deleting the emails, lay the fundamental truth that there was something about Hillary Clinton uh, that folks just didn't trust, which I think is true. But yeah. then you say, and that something was an intelligent, capable, ambitious woman in a position of power. Having covered the race very closely um, yeah. for all that time, I would right. submit to you it was, it was so much more than that. There's no question sexism pr played a role in her defeat. Mm -hmm. But I watched her at that UN press conference when she first addressed those emails, and she said several, several things that were not true, Jen, as you know. There was no classified information. I only used one device for out of convenience, which didn't turn out to be true. There was tons of classified information, 110 emails, classified or top secret, and so on. And these things kept unraveling, and it led to a, a distrust that many people, yes, already had of her, thanks to Whitewater and all these other things. But you can't ascribe 
even the majority of it to sexism. Can you fairly? So the way I look at it is um, I think that a man would have survived that, okay? And I think that there was going to be something in the campaign that ended up to be emails. If it weren't emails, it was going to be something else. And I think that this is what the first woman, this sort of crucibles, is what they had to go through, or she had to go through. I went back and watched interviews about Hillary Clinton and of Hillary Clinton from the 92 campaign, right? And you know what people say, what do you think of Bill Clinton's wife? Uh, man on the street with Monster street interviews. You know, there's something about her I just don't like. There's something about her I just don't trust. And I thought, wow, <laughs> it was, I felt really liberated in that moment because I thought, I am not solving this problem. This is before Whitewater, this is before Travelgate, this is before anything in the White House, this is before emails, healthcare, anything. And I think that she has always been, she's always challenged the way we've thought about women from when she was a young college student. That's true. Uh, to when she was uh, Bill Clinton's wife, who's running for president. She made more money than him. She didn't stay home and bake cookies. She was the first first lady that but, worked but, on but policy. But she got in trouble because she sounded judgmental of those who did. Yeah, she, yes. And that could yes. be the thing people and didn't that like, is, you know, the and judgment. That is, but, yeah, but that's my, my point is she's always been that. She's always been stepping a little outside of that box. And I just think that's how it manifests itself is that people... She vexes them. They don't know what to think of her. Mm -hmm. um, and what I found with reporters on emails is the question just kept moving. The goalpost kept moving. And it, it just fundamentally, I think there's just something they, they find suspicion in a woman looking to succeed. And it doesn't mean that the whole world is sexist. No. Or, or, or that everybody who voted for Trump Or everybody is who voted for Trump is sexist, or that everybody who doesn't, you know, there's plenty of fine reasons to not vote for her. But I think I want, I think it is worth going back and looking at that so we understand what, what lays at the root of that. And it's like T-S-A-H-I-J-D-L. There's something about her I just don't like. And you hear it all the time about women in, uh, in powerful well, positions. Well, listen, even and if I don't you disagree want, like, with what Jen is saying, look at the history. Name a female president. We'll wait. <laughs> we'll wait. We'll be yeah. sitting here after but, the break. And, what, and why is that? Is because there, there hasn't been a talented or smart or ambitious enough one in, since the beginning of time? Doubtful. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.